furnish his own equipment. Texas saddle, bridles with the range long as plow lines, ornamental bed. A slicker of oil canvas was ever at hand tied to the candle string. In our craft, we never used the cattle whip. In an emergency, you could always rely on the loose end of a rope. But what I remember best of all is that long monotonous days in the saddle. Why, sometimes we were riding 16, 18 hours a day. Now, as spring passed, so did its freshness. The plains soon took on their natural, sunburnt color. Only mirages broke the monotony. We saw shady groves of timber in the barren land, tempting lakes where there was never water. If you were riding in the rear, the cattle and horsemen up ahead feared like giants in the old bed. I ride no pain, I lead no dance. I'm gone to Montana to draw the land. They feel the coolies, they water in the dark. Their tails are all matted, their backs are all so bad. I ride around, we go, we ride around, we go. So far in, so we are ready to go. Ride around, we go, we ride around, we go. So far in, so we are ready. unbearable to man and beast. Our cattle milled and belled in their fever and became unmanageable, ungovernable as the waves of the ocean. At night we doubled the guard for fear of a stampede. Each man would take a two and a half hour shift, riding round and round in a circle outside the herd of sleeping cattle. Once in a while a man dozed in the saddle or sang a song softly so the herd might know that a friend, not an enemy, was near.
skirting the Llano Estacado, across the Colorado, over open country to the Brazos, north to the Wichita, across the Red River into Indian Territory. <laughs>
in the stirrup, my bridle in hand, I'm leaving sweet Millie, the fairest of the land. Fly with me, fly with me, fly with me, fly with me, I'll fly. If you don't give me the tea, I surely will die. Rye whiskey, rye whiskey, you're no friend of mine. You killed my poor pappy, you troubled my mind. Rye whiskey, rye whiskey, rye whiskey, I'll fly. If you don't give me whiskey, I surely will die. Diamonds, jack of diamonds, I know you of old. You robbed my poor pocket of silver and gold. Rye whiskey, rye whiskey, rye whiskey, I cry. If you don't give me whiskey, I shall be alive. I'll drink it, I'll gamble, my money's my own. And them that don't like me can leave me alone. Rye whiskey, rye whiskey, rye whiskey, I cry. If you don't give me whiskey, I shall be alive. Rye whiskey, rye whiskey, rye whiskey, I cry. If you don't give me whiskey, I shall be alive. They ride hard for weeks and months. No liquor, no women, nothing but a saddle, danger, and loneliness. When they get into town, they're half crazed. They tear the place apart, get drunk, and raise hell. When someone figures he's been insulted or cheated in a card game, why, there's hell to pay. They get to swearing and fighting and shooting. <laughs> pointed upward. Most of the business houses were dance halls, gambling houses, saloons. Cowboys came to them as sailors came to a port, or desert wanderers to an oasis, or dusty pilgrims to a consecrated shrine. In towns such as these, trail hands could lose a year's pay in a night's gambling. The most daring of these losers took to robbing mail trains or the overland stages. Sooner or later, such outlaws met death. Such was the story of Sam Bass, Jesse James, Billy the Kid, Charlie Quintrell, and Joel Collins. The careers of these bad men, as they were called, are immortalized in the cowboy's favorite bad man ballad, The Wild Colonial Boy. Imported from Australia, 
This song showed the universality of the cowboy's experience, the hazards and daring of his life. There was a wild colonial boy, Jack Dillon was his name. He was born and raised in Ireland in a place called Castlemaine. He was his father's only son, his mother's pride and joy. And dearly did his parents love this wild colonial boy. Come on, ye hearties, we'll roam the mountains high. Together we will plunder, together we will die. We'll wander over valleys and gallop over plains. We'll scorn to live in slavery, not down with iron chains. At scarcely sixteen years of age, he left his father's home and to Australia's sunny shore he was inclined to roam he robbed the rich he helped the poor he shot James McAvoy and a terror to Australia was this wild colonial boy Every one of you was on that train for Texas before you had a chance to spend that money on a spree. 
We left the horses behind, sold them to strangers. I felt fighting with them even more keenly than I felt leaving home. When they'd shared all our hardships on a 3,000-mile trip. It was hard to part with them, to forget them. But a lot of guys, too, never came back. Why, I can still see the trailside graves crossing Texas, Kansas, Nebraska, Wyoming. We passed them by the hundreds. A square pile of cottonwood logs marked the place with a pile of stones heaped up to keep the animals away. Death was always close. A fellow might be trampled by horses or gored by cattle. He might die of snake bite or drowning. Guns going off by themselves killed more fellows than gunfights. The great overland drive went on for only a few years. From 1867 to 1880, when the drives were at their height, more than four million Texas cattle traveled the western trails, from the San Antonio Valley north to the railhead, the grazing grounds, the Indian reservations. As the farmers moved in, fenced the land, and put it to the plow, the great drives became a thing of the past. They rose and went like a flash, leaving upon the American mind an ineffaceable memory of fenceless freedom. Its wild music still echoes in our ears. Thank you. 